So, so totally bittersweet because I thought he was going to be in this train phase for a long time, but I think he's moved on, but that's common, right? You guys have kids, uh, they, they go through phases of, of toys. Okay. All right. So I'm uh, on to the next phase and the next phase is obviously dinosaurs. So. <laughs> Sometimes you'll be happy that they move on. You'll be like, I'm so glad they're over that. <laughs> no. I'm so glad that he went through a Lion King phase, like the live action one. And during early uh, stages of pandemic, we must have watched that movie. I don't know. I want to say a hundred plus times. Like I would try to put anything else on and there was no Lion King, Lion King, Lion King. So yes, I was happy that we moved past that. All right. So we are going to get started in one minute. Good to see everybody. Thank you for being here. Miss Gabrielle, how was the open house this weekend? It was good. There was a good amount of traffic both days and a lot of interest. One funny thing that happened is somebody took or stole all of my business cards. Like I had a nice little stack out. They took them all, which I thought was kind of weird, but like fine. Took your business cards, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they just want to promote your business and how awesome you were. So they just wanted to make sure to take a good stack so they could tell the world about you. Maybe so. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, taking the business card. I don't even get it. Um, all right, guys, it's officially 835. Welcome. Good morning. We have a lot of new faces on the screen today. So by a show of hands or give me a reaction down below, who is new to group coaching? Please give me a hand. All right, Brittany, what's up? How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm well. Brittany, I'm Elias Astuto. I'm the director of sales and coaching for Fast Real Estate. I understand that you are friends with Christina. Um, you were out with her this weekend. You're officially joining the company. So welcome to group coaching. Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you joined our company. So I'm brand new to real estate and I'm really excited to start. I was introduced uh, uh, to Christina by another agent out here in Brentwood. So I was looking at eXp for a while trying to figure out my options. But after talking to a lot of people, I realized like working with a team was probably best as a brand new agent. So I'm really excited to be here and start getting out there. Well, awesome, awesome. And you know, the first you know, couple of days, you're already in our environment. We're all about the collective wisdom, Brittany. And I'll have an agent tell you about that in a second. We are all about the collective wisdom because we feel that's how you're going to advance and how we are all going to advance. It's not just coming from a leadership department. We are in the thick of things, sharing and giving in this abundance mentality. So I appreciate you being here, Brittany. This session happens three times a week. It's open to all. We want you to come in, do the hard work. You will get pushed in this environment, but in a positive, positive way. We're always looking out for our agents and how can we make you guys better? So thank you for being here. Um, who else is new to the room today and new to group coaching? Just give me um, a reaction or say something. Nobody else is new to the room? Hi, how are Hi. you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Good to see you. Welcome to Group Coaching. Tell us a little bit about yourself and who you are. Uh, sure. This is Marnaz Rafadi, and uh, I'm a wife and the mommy of nine-month-old um, golden doodle, um, Doggy. <laughs> he, um, his name is Fur Free. So uh, I'm here to learn more, and um, so... Um, and I'm in transitioning, changing the teams. Um, but uh, uh, the reason that I love to be in Team Fast, it's, it's all about energy, it's all about co collaboration, it's all about you know, pushing each other to being best version of uh, ourselves. So, and then technology, it's top notch. So um, I'm excited to be here and um, yeah. Awesome. This is a little bit about me. <laughs> awesome, well, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here and welcome. So, Want somebody to bring us out on the field for the people that have been? No, Alex, this is your first time to group coaching too, right? Well, actually, I've done it like one or twice. <laughs> but, okay, all right. Well, welcome but, back, my brother. Yes, exactly. And, and that's what it is, is that um, I had to make some changes and make some choices and um, to make it so that I could make these meetings. And uh, so now I'm here. So <laughs> I'm very excited to... Yeah, uh, it's like a new beginning again. <laughs> That's great, brother. You know, my man, I love your smile. Wish I could just like give you like, oh, hey, thank you. From here, bro. <laughs> All right, man. Well, it's really, really good to see you. So, Ernesto, yeah, let's pick up my man. You. 
Uh, for the people that haven't been here, um, obviously, and for the people that are in the room today, why don't you go ahead and bring us out on the out on the field uh, today and let the new people know what to expect in this environment. Awesome. Good morning, everybody. I've been on these calls for uh, on and off about two months. I've been more consistent about it recently. I get so much energy from being here. Elias is a fantastic coach. Uh, people have commented on the energy and the collaboration. I can tell you last week alone, I reached out to people on the team I had never interacted with. Every single person was responsive. Ronnie, who I haven't met in San Francisco, helped me at like nine o'clock at night with something. I've not received that type of support anywhere else. So hopefully that is a reflection uh, of the culture that we have. You guys can reach out to anybody. You can certainly reach out to me. I'm super happy to be here with all of you and I hope we all have a great week. Oh, boom, I love it. And you know what? Let's give it up for Ernesto's mic. He's got the best mic in the game. Is that? And that's just the mic that comes with the computer, right? <laughs> Uh, so man, I love it. I'm love it. You guys, I, I want to tell you, like I've been doing some, some obvious reflecting. I, I'm always reflecting, looking, reading, writing. Um, and, and I wanted to look back over our last couple months together. Uh, we've been doing some really, really great work. And um, I wanted to go around the room. I want to ask you guys about a couple key things that you feel that you have not only learned, but what have you applied in your business that you have feel that have moved your needle? I want to start the conversation off there because I'm seeing all kinds of great things and, and hearing all kinds of great things, but I want you guys to share this environment. So let's talk about this. What are a few things that you guys have learned? What are a few things that you have applied in the last couple of months, if you could quantify those things and that have helped you to move your needle? So who would like to start off? Anyone feel free to volunteer or just grab the mic. I see some eyes. I might just pick on you. Anybody want to step up and say what they've learned in this environment, what they've applied and how that's helped them move their own needle? I'd say for me, I don't know. Can everyone hear me? We can. Is that who's talking? Is that David? David. David. What's up, big dog? What's going on, everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'd say leaning on the team. There's been a couple of times where I didn't know things and I was at other brokerages would have been nervous to present a question that could have been interpreted as stupid or it could have been interpreted as I should have already known that. So one of the things that I'd say I learned the most and the fastest was how open and accepting this team is and how ready they are to help you with things that you may not know or things that they may know better than you. Um, and that's something that I want to work on more is continuing to leverage the team to help me learn and then vice versa, you know, to help the help my clients get into their best home. So that, awesome. that's what I say is the first first thing for me. Awesome. Uh, let's hear from somebody else. What have you learned and what have you applied in your business that have helped you to move your needle in a positive direction? I see. I'll some go, I'll go for. Uh, oh, go ahead, Terry. Uh, I was just going to say um, communication. Coming to these meetings um, makes you more comfortable as far as first and foremost listening and then being able to be confident in your answers that you project to your clients. Mm, I love it. I love it. I think Michael was talking too. Is that Michael that chimed in? Thank yeah, that was me. Go ahead, I'll Michael. I'll say uh, mindset and details. Like mindset just on how approaching everything and realizing that maybe your mindset isn't fully the correct place it should be and that there's room for improvement and just different pieces that can improve. And then details, just the questions on not what you say, but how you say it and how you're moving forward with clients, um, your presentation, your just everything about you as a whole. It really helps you become a polished agent and just um, everything. It's just a very positive environment. Man, I've seen tremendous growth from you, my man, like tremendous growth. So good stuff. Um, Sylvia, how about from you? You raise your hand. Okay, yeah, I, I just want to say that the, what I have gained is the team environment because like my car is broke right now. And so without the team, I would have felt stalled because I have a, a potential buyer client who was looking in outside of my area and with my car being broke I can't really get to him however I reached out and partnered with someone who can get to him right. so I mean it, it's just that was a um 
a great burden off of me because I'm thinking, you know, if I can't service this client, you know, that's going to stall my business. But I just told him that, you know, we have, I have a partner and we're, we're working together to try to get him into a home. So just Beautiful. the peace of mind of knowing that I have an entire team to help me and to fall back on. Mm, I love it. I love it. Amy Imhoff, or, or was that you, Amy? Um, Amy Fallon. Oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Amy. Amy. Sorry, sorry, Amy Fallon. Uh, so, Amy, what have you learned? What have you applied? And how has it moved your needle in a positive direction? Well, of course, the collective energy of this great group of people, I feel welcome, that I feel a part of, which is so important. But I've also used Slack. Uh, like it's like it's like I can talk to all of you at the same time and I've really learned a lot from best calls and the open house channel and like you always talk about preparation and practice and I use that watching all of you and all those recorded videos I've been practicing I've been watching and I've been taking notes and that's really helpful and it builds confidence for me. Beautiful, beautiful. I love it. I love it. Let's hear from one other person. What's something that you've learned in this environment and what's something that you have applied that has moved your needle in a positive direction? The man just took his mask off. Are you going? Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, confidence. Like, um, again, even if you're new or if you've been in it for a little while, I think we all have uh, suffered from somewhat of a lack of confidence and uh, just being around like-minded individuals and seeing that we all experience some of the same things and feelings it's been really helpful to like help me move past a lot of barriers that i've had like i still have some so i'm still coming to coaching and uh still trying to get my face on the internet more but uh again confidence has been big in in joining these sessions because again you're around a lot of like-minded people and not just looking at others from afar and, and kind of being envious you're right here in the trenches with them so beautiful i love it yeah. man and you have a great face. Let's see it more. All right. Let's give it up for Demi in space. All right. <laughs> That's right. How's that little baby doing, brother? Man, she's great. She uh, she's fitting right in. All she wants to do is eat and sleep, and that works out fine in my house. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Awesome, you guys. Well, I love it. You, because here's the thing, you guys, it's one thing to come to coaching. We can sit here and run drills all day long, right? I believe in running drills. I believe in the very, very simple offense. But if you're not going out there and applying, then none of this really, really matters, right? I want you guys to be able to take the nuggets that you're getting from our sessions together and say, you know what? I'm going to take a piece of that and I'm going to apply it in my business today, right? I'm going to apply, I'm going to apply, I'm going to apply. So then I can look back and like, wow, look how I've moved my needle. I'm not about major shifts in your business, you guys. I'm talking about millimeter shifts every single week that over time, you're like, man, you look back and your success is a culmination, right? Like we always say, you guys, anytime you ever hear Tony Robbins speak, success doesn't just arrive. Success is all the small things that you've done over the years that now it's like, wow, look at this. This is a culmination. So this is not just about coming here. And first off, I appreciate the accountability. You guys waking up early, getting here, having your coffee, having some moments with us in the morning. But then it's about, okay, how can I apply this in my business? So I want to talk about a couple of things right now. And uh, But before I do, every single call, I am going to challenge somebody to book me for an appointment. Um, you guys down with that? We're going to do a live role play session. I'm going to pick on somebody randomly, and we are going to book an appointment from the lead pond. Uh, because unlike other companies, you guys have over 6,000 leads that you do have access to. Now, what stands in our way of making calls? Ourselves, right? We get fearful. How many of us, no matter how long you've been in this business, and please be honest with me, how many people still get a little fearful of making and prospecting calls? right? Let's get a little reaction. Okay. So you still have a little bit of trepidation or a little bit of fear associated with making prospecting calls. I no longer have fear of making prospecting calls. I don't, I can pick up the phone and just be like, all right, bring it, bring it, bring me the rejections, bring it on. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm down for it because it's just practice, practice, practice over all these years. So um, I am going, actually, let's do two calls this morning. Let's go to David Hiller, David Hiller, you're up for, oh no, David went last week. I'm sorry, David went last week. 
You did. Okay. So let's come back to David. I'm going to go to Gabrielle. Gabrielle, are you ready? Yes. Yes. I see the big smile. All right. So Gabrielle. I haven't done this before yet. It's okay. Cool. Because I promise you, you'll get better. Right. So here's the context. You, um, I'm in the lead pond. You see that I was searching for a home six months ago in Oakland. You're shaking the tree. You're calling me to book an appointment and find out, find an opportunity to meet with me. So um, let's do this, you guys. Let's give her some um, quiet on the scene, quiet on the set. Gabrielle, you're going to call me and we're going to run right through this. All right. I'm going to pick on two people each session. So let's run it back. Go ahead, Gabrielle. Call me. Hello. Hello, Elias. This is Gabrielle with EXP. How's it going? It's good. Good. What can I do for you? Good. Well, I have here in my notes to check in on you. I you see that you were checking in on homes a few months ago, so I wanted to call and see where you were in your Oh, wait, life. hold on. How did you get my number? Um, I think that you had worked with someone on my team a few months ago. Um, I don't know. If no, you I didn't work with anybody on your team. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I would love to reintroduce myself. Um, I'm with e EXP. We are um, a group of realtors in the SF area. I just want to check and see how your home buying process was going. Are you still looking for a home? No. And may I ask, uh, what made you stop? Uh, we just want to wait till the crash happens and maybe prices are going to go down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The market is definitely pretty hot and it sounds like you've been doing your homework. Mm -hmm. um, let me this one of the reasons why the market is so hot right now is because interest rates are at an all-time low so that's definitely fueling a lot of the interest in homes right now so would you be interested in kind of exploring what's out there so you can get a chance to lock in those low interest rates we're seeing right now no okay and um i i feel that i feel that okay um well, well, thanks for your time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, hey, let's give her a round of applause for stepping up, for having the intestinal fortitude to step up in this environment. Gabrielle, this is an environment where it's going to be the toughest, right? And if you could practice here and have that dialogue down, when you pick up the phone, like, okay, we've gone through this in coaching before, but really, really, really good job. So if I can remove the, the, the thought of interest rates are at an all-time low, Let's just take that out of the equation here, right? So it's kind of like this, Mr. Johnson, I was looking for really, really creative ways to call you and talk to you about the interest rates being low and inventories in a, uh, you know, very tight, but I just wanted to follow up with you and just ask you, are, are you, normally when someone goes on to Zillow, they're ready to buy now, or they're just in the looking phase. I just want to understand where are you and your family at? Oh, well, we're just in the looking phase. Okay, so Gabrielle, let me understand, or Mr. Johnson, let me understand, uh, what was the original goal, right? Take me back, what was your original goal and what happened and why'd you stop? Like to be able to take them from the, the quintessential answer of interest rates are at all time low, like I wanna find some more meat out from these people because at one time they were searching, at one time they were consumed with pictures and thoughts, it was reticular activator, it was constantly on their mind, but then something changed, right? Because you know right now when you're searching for real estate, it is all consuming, right? You don't just put that aside like, no, we're not going to do that anymore. Something had to have changed. So the thought is, and the idea behind that is how do we get to that? And we got to get to it quick, right? But you did a really, really good job. You have, you didn't get stumped right when I hit you with the first objection. You kept on going. You kept on running your routes. And so really, really good stuff. Who wants to Elias, stop? real quick, real quick, can like... For I don't know what her sales experience is in the past, but for her to overcome the first two no's and not <laughs> my first sales job, I would have been like, uh, 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 like I would have been tripping over my words. So, yo, for the first role play, like, I mean, that's as good as it gets. So, yeah, that yeah. was lit. So I'm, I'm going to I'm going to hype up Gabrielle and I said this last week and I got a little bit of goosebumps talking about this. Um, she did a buyer's consultation with me and I swear to God, Ryan, it's like she had been doing this for 10 years, bro. She ran through it because she had, I was like, all right, once we're done, I was like, tell me about your background. You have done presentations in the past. She's like, yeah, I was in corporate marketing. I was doing presentation. I was like, I knew it. So communication is spot on. We'll just find a, a couple, like I said, millimeter shifts. 
tour was like, ooh, there it is right there. There it is. There it is. But yeah, Gabrielle, like. Hey, I got a quick comment. Here's a, when you first start the call it East East, most of you don't know what East East is. It sounds like a tech company. So I'll just say like East East Realty or Fast Real Estate with East East. Yep. And then you guys can say we're a Zillow Premier partner, right? Because we are, right? We're not, we're not throwing shit out there. Most of these people say are uh, most of these people, these leads came from Zillow, right? These are leads that were unconverted into sales. And so at one time they were on a search platform with us and it's Zillow. So who wants to go next? Who wants to step up and go next? Or I'll just call on somebody. Anybody want to go? All right. Go, good stuff, uh, PK. Appreciate you stepping up and wanting to go. So we're going to go to PK next. Same exact context, but I'm looking for a house in, oh, let's just go Berkeley. You saw me looking six months ago. You're making your calls. You're dialing for opportunities. And now you are doing a cleanup of the database and you're going to call me. Let's run, run it back. Hello. Good morning, Elias. This is PK with eXp Realty. Hi. Uh, hi. hi. Can you hear me okay? I'm having yeah. some. Okay, great. Um, so I'm just checking in with you because in my uh, list of contacts, I have that you were looking into Berkeley to buy a property. How's the search going so far? Um, it's not. We're, we're just kind of put it on hold. Okay, it's on hold. What happened? Uh, well, we just, it, we, it was just tough. We weren't finding anything and everything. All of our friends were buying houses. Everything was, was like 20% over and we don't have that. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely reflective of the current market right now. Uh, was this going to be your primary residence or an investment property? Uh, primary residence with our two kids. Oh, nice. How old are your kids? Um, nine and three. Okay. So were you also looking into school districts or what were the criteria that you were mainly aiming for? Yeah. You know, anything above a four school district would be ideal, but it was kind of hard in most of the parts of Oakland. So we're thinking Berkeley, but then Berkeley, we were kind of priced out. So we just kind of were at a standstill. Mm -hmm. And is your, uh, you, you still have your pre-approval and everything? Uh, yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah, they said 90 days though. Okay, no problem. Um, those are pretty easy to renew. Um, so I would also recommend getting in touch with your lender and mm -hmm. giving them a heads up. Mm -hmm. Elias, um, so your goal when you started, what was that goal? When well, you started? You know, it's to build that, that security, obviously, for the family. But I think that now it's, I don't think that it's possible. Mm -hmm. um, and what would it look like if you stay at your current residence? I'm assuming you're renting? Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're paying $3,000 a month. Um, so we just, I guess, continue to pay that. Mm -hmm. Well, Elias, um, I would love to be able to help you uh, find something, especially given that your goal was to find security for your family. That's an important goal. And schools start in a couple of months. So I would really love to uh, make you a priority client for myself. Uh, what do you say if we have um, a follow-up conversation today? I also do have a couple of properties in mind in Berkeley that I would love to send over to you. And if any of them are uh, on par with what you're looking for, I would love to take you to tour um, with your family. And I'm assuming your partner or your wife will be also joining us. Yes. Okay. So Elias, uh, what is your schedule like today at uh, 2 p.m.? Um, so um, that we can have... Working, but I mean, after five, we have some availability. That is perfect for me. After five is awesome. I will uh, give you a call, Elias, at 5 p.m. And we can okay. have a more thorough conversation about the next steps. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's give a round of applause, you guys. Fucking killed it. Okay. Here's, here's one where I wrote in my notes right here. Empathy. How many people got a sense of empathy when PK was talking? Her, right? She didn't go these highs and lows. It was as soon as I said something and you could see it because fortunately we're able to see her physiology and her body language. She was like this. Yeah, I understand. Right. There was such a great sense of empathy. So PK, I love that. You took them back to what their dreams were. So, well, take me back. Like, what happened? If that security for your family was so important, like, what happened? I would have added. So, let me ask you a question, Mr. Buyer. If I was able to find that home for you that was in the school districts above four, 
that made sense for you and your family, would you still, would you reopen your search? Would you go out there and see more homes? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, so that, okay, so then it's my job. Now I have a challenge, right? And let me ask you a question, Mr. Buyer, who is educating you on the current market and telling you what strategies are gonna win in this competitive environment? Who is that person for you right now? Uh, well, we don't, we don't have a person. Okay, who is that person before? And then why aren't you working with that person anymore? What happened? Right? There was, there was, there was a few layers of opportunities there. And then let me ask you this, who had a strategy for you to find those properties that might not be on Zillow or on the internet? Did someone come up with a strategy for you to find those properties that haven't even hit the market yet? Because what do you have, PK? You have the team, you have off market opportunities. So um, you guys really, really good stuff that I'm hearing. Like, um, what are you guys' feedback? I know Ryan had some great stuff to say about Gabrielle. Gabrielle being brand new, crushed it. Um, you guys, what about for PK? Any thoughts, anything that you guys heard in the way that she speaks that really stood out to you? Her tone feels like a hug. Like a... Dude, right? Yeah, totally. Like when she was talking, and, and because the consumer's not going to see, mm -hmm, I just felt empathy. Like total, total sense of empathy. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Christina D, what's up? I want to compliment PK because I've heard her say in the past that she was not comfortable with making phone calls or it wasn't her strong area. And girl, you are so wrong. You're so good at making calls and you are extremely comforting. Um, if I was a client, I would have been totally on that five o'clock call. So I just want to say great job. Thank you. So, so uh, Kenny, go ahead. Oh, no, no, okay. Um, I, I think Gabrielle and um, PK were, were you didn't s s hear a sense of fear in their voice when they were talking. Like both of them felt like, okay, like I'm ready for this, but it wasn't, I didn't feel combative and I didn't feel like that it was an interrogation of questions. So Gabrielle, tell me, why aren't you searching anymore? How long has it been? Have you found the perfect, it, it just felt like very conversational, which is key. So let's do one more. Elias, I was just about to say on both calls, you didn't, after the first couple of object objections, you still didn't hear them get rattled. Nope. Sometimes as salespeople will, you know, you can hear it, you can, you can notice when we tense up because we're like, okay, we're already thinking about what are we gonna say? But they kind of just flowed right through it. And really what they did, um, they paused instead of like saying um or stumbling, they just paused and thought about what they were going to say. So I don't know, these two yeah. calls were- Yeah, really, really, really good observations there. That pause, and Kenny and I talk about it all the time, purposely putting pauses into our communication. That was really, really good, you guys. So yeah, great job. You guys were unscathed. You guys were un, um, you know, deterred from any of the objections. And at the end of the day, here's the thing, you guys. If you don't ask for an appointment, you're never going to get an appointment. I don't care if you weren't on the best rhythm, like, hey, Tom, listen, I feel I can help you, but I have to show you guys how I can help you. Here's what I want to do. I want to do a buyer's consultation with you so I can tell you what it's going to take to win right now in this competitive environment. I don't care if it's six months down the road, three months down the road, or it's next week. I want to at least take a position to educate you because I know that this is the most important purchase of your family's life, right? Why would someone say no to that? Well, they may say no, but who cares? The point being is that if you don't ask for an appointment, you're never going to get it. So just try because what's going to happen? They might just say, you know what? You're right. It's good timing, Gabrielle. Glad that you called. Glad that you called. So really, really good stuff, you guys. I'm absolutely love this conversation. So I want to ask you guys why people struggle with this part of their career, why people struggle with making phone calls. And I wrote some notes here is that they first off, they haven't decided who to call. You guys know who to call. If you don't know who to call, we can have that conversation. There's tons of expireds on, on, on um, the MLS. You guys have the lead pond, which is about 6,000 lead opportunities. I would just start there. If you guys don't know how to call, dive into the lead pond. Um, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Well, you guys, I think that we're, there's so much practicing done in this environment. There's the best calls channel. Um, the more that you make calls, 
the more ammo that you'll have for future calls, right? You'll be able to learn and develop your own data collection of objections, thoughts, ideas, what people are saying. So then that way you can use it to your advantage in the next calls. Uh, lack of plan, right? A lot of people plan to, uh, or lack to plan how often, how many calls. You guys need to put that, especially if you're new and you don't have a ton of escrows right now, there needs to be a plan put in place that's going to allow you to allocate the time that you need to grow your business. I, you guys, I know this is rudimentary. We talk about this all the time, but you have to have some type of plan. Here's what else we hear and why people struggle is my environment isn't set up. As you can see, Nicole has kids. We see Martinique, she's driving, she's got kids, right? There's things I, that I get and I understand. I have a three-year-old that's running around. He needs crackers. He needs stuff and dad, dad, this and that. He wants to turn my light on and off. I get it. You have to create an environment for yourself. Great environment for you to go into the office and use some of the focus rooms, use some of the phone booths and just isolate yourself. The fifth reason why people struggle with making phone calls is their psychology isn't aligned to prospect. What do I mean by that? So many of you are fearful that you don't believe that you are good on the phones. The only way that you're going to get good at this, you guys, is, is, is trying over and over and over and over again, you guys. That's the only way this is going to work, right? You guys should be able to look back in a month and be like, damn, I made 250 calls this month. I was able to have X amount of conversations, X amount of appointments set. And from those appointments set, here's who's engaging, who's writing offers, and here's who I have in contract, right? That should be continuous every single month. But that's why people struggle. So I hit on this hard, you guys, because it's a time where we're going to get more busy than we've ever been. Um, we are slated by December to have an average of 800 leads every single month through Zillow Flex, right? That is a huge amount of lead opportunities for you guys. So a lot of companies don't have this type of opportunity for you. So we want you guys to be prepared to know, to have your environment, to create a plan, to create a schedule, to know your dialogue. So when you are actually having a conversation with the consumer, you need to think in your mind, I could probably book anybody that I get on the phone call with. I want you guys to have that type of swag. Like, give me a list. I'll call them. Yeah, shoot. Let's go. Let's all have a call fun. You guys got your stuff. Let's give an energy drink and let's make calls. That's the kind of swag that I want for you guys because that's confidence. But that confidence is only going to come by you guys constantly, constantly practicing your craft. So I wanted to leave you with those thoughts, you guys. But I um, want to talk a little bit about being present. And I'm going to shift gears into wellness. So you guys, uh, as you guys know, I, I got a car, I got a 67 bug, which I'm really, really super, super excited about. But it taught me something over the weekend. It taught me to be super present. Um, a 67 bug, you, you have to drive it. And what I mean by that is that you have to roll down the windows manually. You got to shift the thing. It goes slower. It doesn't have any bells and whistles. So you're truly just in this moment of being present. And I was like, I reflected, I was like, God, this is just a cool experience because most of the times we're go, go, go. We're in our car, does so much for us. Some of us have self-driving cars, so we're not even driving when we're actually driving, right? So it made me like just stop and like relax with my thoughts and like be super present about what was going on around me. What was I thinking? Um, you know, what I want to accomplish for the week. And I just thought it was a really, really cool experience because a lot of times, how many of us are guilty? We move at such a high speed that we forget to just be present in the moment. This business is crazy, you guys. And when we're not present, we, we, we tend to miss things, right? Miss the small little subtle, I love you. Hey, how are you? Like it, you, we have to make sure to su be super present because this business can be all consuming. And I want you guys to take those moments to reflect. So we talk a lot about being busy and the hustle and the grind and the prospecting, get your calendar right, practice, come to meetings, come to sessions, go to the office. We talk about all of these things, right? That are gonna move production. But a conversation we haven't had in this environment in a while is, is wellness. And a conversation that keeps on arising and I hear in it more and more and I'm seeing it on social more and more is burnout. I'm hearing the conversation about burnout left and right. And I know that we are taking on high levels of stress. And I know what that stress can do to us. It can make us sick. 
So I wanted to ask you guys, and I want to have a roundtable discussion on this topic. What are you guys doing right now to decrease your burnout? What are you doing right now to alleviate some of that stress and all the busyness that you guys have in your career? Like, what are you doing right now to get in front of it? The reason, even if you're not busy right now, the reason why we're having this conversation is that when you're busy and you're running like crazy, I want you to have some sense of how do I balance my time to where I'm not getting burnt out because that shit is not sustainable. I know it firsthand. So let's have a conversation around this. What are you guys doing right now to decrease your burnout? Let's have a conversation about wellness. Anybody take the mic. Um, for me, I, uh, I got rid of my housekeeper at the start of the pandemic because I'm home all the time. I can do it myself. Um, but now I, I can't, like, I can't, I'm, I'm responsible for everything in my house, you know, my whole entire life. I can't, I just can't do everything. So, um, I hired a housekeeper, um, other things for me, like exercise is non-negotiable. And even if you have to break it up in different, smaller chunks throughout the day, that's better than nothing. Cause you still, it still, you accomplishes the same thing. Yeah. Um, nutrition is super key. Um, because even if, you know, you're staying up a little bit later, sleep is obviously critical, but you can maintain really well with good nutrition and good exercise. And also I've said this before, but meditation, because yeah. especially what you're talking about being present, um, when you take those and it doesn't take a long time, like 10 minutes, you know, even five is better than nothing, but it trans like carries over other moment in, and you build this awareness of hey i'm actually not i need to be more present in this it's, it's getting away from me mm, i love it kelly i really really appreciate you sharing how about for you Amy? go ahead yes i was actually talking about with this with my sister on saturday night giving yourself the gift of a hobby and I know it sounds weird because we're all so busy on our business, but if you give yourself the gift, something that feeds your soul, whether it be, for me, it's painting, whether it be, um, I saw someone on Instagram, I think it was PK, refinishing furniture, that's fantastic. Like giving yourself the gift of feeding your soul through dance, through any type of art, any type of fun, you know, because I think we, we get so caught up in this business and our families, because they need us, we don't take that special time to feed our own soul through, you know, and I feel like we channel, we channel like a higher power through those moments of, of creativity. So that's what I do for myself. Every day I do at least 15 minutes. Ah, I love it. I love it. Good stuff. Nicole Kappel, let's hear from you. Just carving out some me time. Um, during the pandemic, it was just go, go, go for my kids. And I'd get to the end of the day and I was completely depleted and I was depressed and burnt out like you were mentioning. So I just got to wake up a little earlier, um, you know, meditate, read, whatever that looks that like, looks like. but just giving yourself that time to refill your cup so that you can, you know, better serve your family and your clients. Yeah. And better serve yourself. You guys, the reason why we're having this conversation is because it's so important that it's front of mind, right? And being aware and seeing the triggers and knowing what you're doing, because how many of us have missed workouts before because we are working like crazy? How many of us have stayed up until 1.30 in the morning reviewing disclosures, but need to be up at six o'clock in the morning, and then you run a 12-hour day? How many of you have been on the road before and didn't pack a lunch when you're going to 10 showings? How many of you have done that before, right? How many of you have ate some bullshit because you guys forgot to pack a lunch while you guys were out on tour. How many of you have ate bullshit before, right? And then when you eat that bullshit, how does it make your energy level feel for the moment? Good, right? What happens an hour later? <sighs> Fuck, I feel sluggish, right? Exactly. How many of us have drank some energy drinks before? We all know that shit's bad for us, right? Right? <laughs> I see you, right? So it's like all these things. So it's like, I need to identify. Well, how do I do this? Well, I need to first off, pack myself some really good food. I know that sounds crazy, but like pack yourself, you know, some protein shakes, pack yourself some nuts and some fruit and have that stuff ready to go. Right. Making sure I love who said non-negotiable, making that workout time a non-negotiable. I'm going to sweat no matter what is happening. I'm going to sweat because I need to do that. 
right? When I'm with my son, the last thing I want to do, oh, yep, that's good. When it's my night with my son, yeah, baby, that's good. Do that. Yep, daddy loves you. And I'm like, like, it just sucks. I don't want that for him. I don't want to show him that. He knows, yeah, he's going to know hard work. But at the end of the day, I need to make sure that I'm present and I need to make sure that I spend that time with him. All right, guys, what else? Who else is doing stuff that will decrease burnout, that will help them from a wellness standpoint? Any other thoughts, ideas? Sylvia, go ahead. Well, I'm the oldest, so all the responsibility falls on me. My mother is starting to get dementia, and I have a brother and a sister, and they're all they're all over 50, so I... I just had to step back and told my, told them I said she has three kids, not one. So my brother and my sister, who've always looked for me being the responsible oldest one, hey, I had to I had to step back and let them do some of it. That's why I took off and went to Jamaica. They can handle mm -hmm. it; they're grown, mm -hmm. and I had to do that for me. And then I also come home and I run the bath as hot as I can. Put some Epsom salt. Put some lavender in there a lavender bath bomb and i have a, a candle that's a hemp candle that smells like weed and i burn that and i <laughs> turn off the light and i'm good that's right well so you can smoke it too because i heard that has something to do with your, your relaxation yeah but i gotta i gotta <laughs> they have random drug testing at my okay. job <laughs> well once you once you come full-time real estate we don't drug test so. I'm, al I'm already i'm already um doing that yeah yeah i already got that in mind <laughs> i love that you know what she said something that is key and, and martinique and i have had this conversation before um saying no fuck i i cannot tell you how important that is to set personal boundaries no not right now i'm not able to i would love to take that on but i cannot because sometimes we think that we are super people which you guys are but hey at the end of the day you're human you need to say no to people sometimes, especially the people that are closest to you in your life sometimes. You gotta be like, you know what? I can't help you. I can't be everything for everyone. I gotta put me first. PK, you were gonna jump in on that? Yeah, I mean, this is an area that I'm most passionate about. So a uh, couple of things that I always remind myself are that I'm built um, out of it's, it's not just my body, there is my mind, and then there are feelings and emotions that are all just like wandering around all day. And I need to kind of have a check-in with myself on a daily basis to make sure that I'm feeling right and the emotions are not just running my day. Uh, I'm a very emotional person. So the slightest, tiniest little things in my day can just throw me off. And I used to be very much like reactive to situations. So if mm -hmm. I had a bad call, it would ruin my entire day. I would carry that emotion into my house and probably ruin my husband's day as well and everyone else around me. So now I'm learning to have, you know, pauses in the middle of my day or when I'm feeling those reactions, because it's so easy, you you know it, if your body getting tense, your heartbeat is, it's gonna go up. And sometimes it's even your breathing, it's you can you can kind of like, uh, get in touch with it. So just I pause, I drop everything. And I just check in with myself. It's almost like, is this necessary? Mm. Is this something that it's gonna ruin your life? Is this gonna change anything for you? You know, all these like critical questions, almost like discovery for myself. And most most likely the answers are no. It's just like a whatever, like I don't, uh, it's not what I wanted it. It's really just like having expectations that are unrealistic. So I just let it go. Cause I'm like, not, mm. it's not what I need. Um, so I've started to just really accountability because if our emotions are fe and feelings are running our reactions, like there's nothing that we control and it's just like uh, reactionary. And I was in that zone for a very long time, probably most of my life. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, fitness is really important because it really helps me to be able to have a clear head when I'm starting my day, but also throughout the day. I have these continuous check-ins. Some people meditate, meditation is great, but I'm the type that can really do 30 minutes of meditation. I do like break, I break it into little chunks throughout the day, which is my check-in. 
and writing journaling is so important I journal I write down my feelings if I'm having a really shitty day because it gives me an understanding of okay what is the theme here what am I like trying to um, tell myself and yeah just just love it check in with yourself I love it I, I remember reading a book once and it was, and I'm glad that PK said this is because at times what we do is we take the same energy into different scenarios in our life, right? Man, I'm on a bad phone call and now, oh you know, God, it was a litigious situation. And then I hang up the phone and I make a, hey, Tom, how are you? Good. Just want to follow up and I'm supposed to take on a new energy, but I'm carrying all this baggage from my last shit that just happened. So it's like, you have to reflect on that situation. You have to release all that and then re-engage with the new energy depending on what you're doing. You owe the new situation a different energy depending on no matter what it is. I can't be in the car and have a crazy conversation, be pissed off, then walk in the house. Hey, Jen, how was your day? Good. No, I want to release that and be like, hi, babe. Like, how are you? How was your day? I love you. It's so good to see you, right? I want that type of energy versus all this like pent up you know, frustration from my day. So PK, I'm really glad that you said that. So uh, let's hear from you, Alex. I know that you just raised your hand, my man. Go yeah. Ahead. The um, one thing I want to add, and it's not easy, is um, find people that you talk to, you know, because so we're so independent and we're so strong and we want to do everything on our own. And unfortunately, it's not set up that way. We're not that way. We need help. So the more people that you could have to uh, guide you, to give you good information, good to, to help you out in that time, man, you'd be so much more um, successful. I love that. You know, I heard that I, I, maybe hopefully I'm saying it right. It says your network is your net worth, right? And it's not just meaning from a monetary standpoint, like the people that I'm surrounded are the people that are feeding my soul if they're the right people, right? So Alex, really good point. Let's go over to Lily Robinson. Lily Robinson, you raise your hand. Let's hear from you. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I, I raised my hand because all of these conversations, I feel like, you know, we all have this um, need to, to be able to get away from all the busyness, you know, and for me personally, um, I've gone through hell and back uh, in my relationship. My husband, um, he actually, I, we didn't even know that he was dealing with bipolar disorder um, and my whole life um, since I married him has been up and down, you know, so stressful and so draining and once we found out what he had, um, I actually even uh, did a legal separation as well because I, his decisions were just so unstable financially and emotionally and physically. And in order for me to keep my calm, what I've been doing is obviously um, fitness is a part of my life. Um, I do a lot of running, walking, meditation is huge for me. Uh, that's, that's what brings me back to being able to be calm and focus, uh, because basically my life is almost like living one day at a time, <laughs> you know, with, um, with, with him and also obviously my kids, my job. Um, I'm also in the middle of writing a book, uh, which is, uh, is going to be focusing on how to heal our childhood traumas. Uh, because one of the reasons why he was diagnosed with bipolar was because he had a really rough childhood. Wow. And so I've been the one basically coaching him for the past 13 years. Um, but I didn't realize though that it became draining. It became mm -hmm. so exhausting. Um, and I am learning to say no. Uh, just like you said, Elias, yeah. I, I'm learning to say no and to say, okay, is this overwhelming to me? Why is it overwhelming? Uh, is this something that belongs to me or is this something that belongs to the person who's creating this environment? You know, I think we need to focus on that, on, on what is our responsibilities and what is not our responsibilities and how much we can take. Man, I love it, Lily. I absolutely love it. You guys have to have your, your I, I guess, you know, figuratively speaking, you have to have your shield, right? And be able to say, hey, yes. hey, hey, I got, <laughs> nope, my shield is up. Nope, you're going to. I'm protecting my energy, right? Let's hear from Christina D. Christina D, you raise your hand. 
Yes, I, I actually came from an environment where I was working 24 seven because of the pandemic and I became burnt out and I hit the worst wall, probably one of the lowest points of my life. And I promised myself that I'm going to take time for me and how I'm doing this. And I know this market is crazy right now. And I know I personally have a million and one things to do. And I'm not even showing houses yet, but I literally just shut off. Like I'll give myself a full on day. And I know that's probably going to be hard in this business, but I'm, I figured out and game plan, like, how am I going to be able to do it in real estate? I'm like, okay, I can partner up. I can give 50% of my deals away because if I don't have my mental wellness, like health, I'm going to be worth nothing to, you know, this business. So I feel like so important. And I used to preach to my team in the past. Like if you're having a bad day, if you're sad or anything, please shut off. Like I'll make sure things are covered. And, and because we have such an amazing team here, we can leverage off of each other. Like I could be like, Hey, Ryan, I need to shut off whatever calls come in. I'm going to forward them to you. I'll split it with you, but we need to do that. Now it's my promise. Oh yeah. Love it. Love it. Aaliyah, let's hear from you. Good stuff, Christina. Hi. Um, one thing that I do for, well, that I um, want to start working on is putting my phone away um, because I'm pretty much addicted to my phone and it really like be not even just like work stuff, but like being social on media. social media. So I like set a timer for my social media one hour a day. I go over it still go over that one hour a day, but I'm really trying to like on social media, we consume and just like in general, we consume so much negativity um, from this world. And I think just to put that down for like a couple hours a day, if yeah, we can, sure. yeah. um, I think yeah. would really help with my mental health. So that's just one thing for me. Good stuff. Um, Cynthia, how about for you? Do you have a second to chime in on this? I know this is something you've been focusing on. So if you would please uh, share your thoughts on wellness. And, and here's the thing, you guys, you know, like I'm the director of sales and coaching. It's my job to move production in this company. I, you know, first and foremost, if you guys aren't 100%, how can I expect anyone to move production in this company? Everything starts with you guys being 100% the best versions of yourself. And so, Cynthia, I know you've been working on this really, really hard, and I see your post every single day um, that, 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 uh, that you're doing. So you want to share your thoughts on, on how you're working towards decreasing burnout? Yeah, for sure, because I'm the burnout queen, unfortunately, is what this household knows me as. Uh, in the last eight months, I've done two burnouts and it sucks. It's awful. It's the worst. And I'm not going to do that to myself or my family again. Um, the way that I'm consciously not going to go into burnout again is I'm taking off at least one full day a week. And sometimes that means a Friday afternoon and a Saturday morning. And Elias is clapping because he knows how hard it is for me to take time off. But the way I'm doing it is I hit up Patrick, I hit up Joaquin and I'm like, Hey guys, you're my partners in this. Let's go crush it today. This is what, you know, these are the clients that we got to go take care of today. And they're on that shit, man. They are just so on top of it that it allows me to take time off. And then I wake up mad early at this point. It's you can train yourself to get up early. I'm not a morning person, but I've trained my body. It wakes up at five 30, even on my day off. It wakes me up at 5.30. And so I've just been springing up out of bed and uh, doing a little stretching. And then I do meditation before anything else. That's my jam. That's what I go to. And that has uh, brought up a lot of shit, a lot of good stuff and a lot of stuff that I'm realizing that I've been like tucking away. I'm like, nah, let's get it out. Let's get it out there and, and really reflect on it. Um, and then just leaning on this team because I used to chase leads. I used to chase and chase and chase like bullshit leads, you know? And then when I came on this team, it was like, no, like put your focus in on the, the leads that, you know, are going to be closing soon, partner up with people, set the appointment, do not leave the driveway without setting the appointment, do not leave that initial consultation without setting that next appointment. And that has moved the needle for me. And it's made me realize that I'm not going to be the burnout queen anymore. 
Oh, I love it. I love it. No more burnout, Queen. Let's hear from one other person. Let's hear from Ryan. Ryan, you just raise your hand. Go ahead, brother. Great stuff, Cynthia. Yeah, um, I think, you know, burnout comes from mental, sometimes physical exhaustion, but mental exhaustion, right? And I know for me, I experience the most mental exhaustion when I'm unorganized, when I don't have stuff in my calendar, when, and it's not so much about going on autopilot, it's about when you have everything you need to do in front of you, it's like, it's like a following a recipe, like, you don't need to think about how many onions, how many, how many things of garlic, like, it's just like, dude, this is what the recipe calls for. This is what I'm going to do today. And that frees my mind to focus on the meal and not the other outside shit. So, um, you know, I think analogy. In, in addition to what, every, what uh, everything else everyone said today, I know for me, it is a huge task I'm continuing to work on, but the more organized you are, the more you can hone in on your sales pitch, hone in on your presentation, all that stuff. And that's going to make you better and limit the burnout and hopefully prevent it, uh, you know, altogether. So. Totally, you guys. I absolutely love that. So it's like, you know, look at, look at your calendar. We always talk about calendar and getting organized. You know, do you have a template for just in contract? Do you have your buyer's presentation that's ready? Do you have a high note created? So you're not like scrambling, oh my God, or I don't know what I'm gonna do, or my time is pulled over here because you didn't schedule anything, right? So you guys gotta get really, really, you have to adopt this mentality of, I'm gonna put all the systems in place that Team Fast offers. And I know at first it's daunting, but once you have the systems in place over time, it will help you guys to alleviate some of the things that are on your plate. You'll be able to use the VAs. You'll be able to use your brothers and sisters on this team to help you guys have a more balanced lifestyle. For me, you guys, um, everything, when it, well, not everything, a huge part of my relaxation comes from this right here, right? It comes from me spending time every single weekend listening to vinyl records. I, I, I make a pot of coffee. I sit here, I listen to records and, and I chill. Like you guys, I can, I've been doing that same routine for probably about seven years. Every single weekend, I listen to at least two to five records. I listen to the whole thing, front and back, and I just chill. And we're talking all kinds of music because it helps put me in a really relaxed, relaxed state and, and I'm able to really just decompress. That music time is important. Sometimes when I'm driving, because I do a lot of driving, I sit there in silence. I don't have any music on and I just process everything that I'm gonna accomplish for the day. So when I get to wherever I'm going, I feel super relaxed. I feel at ease, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to put my best foot forward with the most amount of energy that I can for that particular situation. I love it. I absolutely love it. I need that time. So you guys, this was a really, really great session. I love this conversation. I wanna go around the room, just get a couple key takeaways and I wanna ask, um, let's see if we have a guest on the line that is still here. Uh, Brittany Wade, let's go to you really quick. You're new to this environment. What was some of your takeaways from today's time together? I really love the team environment, how everyone's motivating each other and supporting each other. Like, I feel like it's really good to have the people to talk to so you're not on your own. Yeah. That's scary for me, like starting. I'm like, what am I going to do? And just talking to people and getting the support, I think is really helpful getting started. Yeah. Sure. We'll have tons of support here. <laughs> tons of support. Just getting started. I'm so eager to go out there and start. So, yes, love it. Me. Love it. Uh, Patrick Nissen, takeaways from today's session together. Um, I mean, just the value of knowing when to say no, I think is so critical. It's something that I've learned how to do recently, especially when you're like the video guy to all your friends, like your brother, <laughs> your brother wants you to film the wedding and your friend wants them to film the music video and this and that. And, you know, you have to get to a point where putting your foot down and drawing the line in the sand is really imperative to making sure that you can stay consistent with your objectives and goals. Because ultimately, if you keep hitting snags, you're never going to hit your stride. And it's something really, really important for me to recognize as I sort of close out the second half of my first year. Love it, you guys. Love it. Let's hear from one Patrick, of the Patrick, you do music videos? <laughs> oh, bro, yeah, that's how I started. I started shooting. I shot videos for Roscoe Dash when I was like in college and then the rest is history. Ah. <laughs> I'm telling you. 
if you guys have seen his videos, if you have not, make sure you follow Coolest Home. Um, amazing, amazing videos. Um, so let's go over to uh, Alex. Alex, takeaways from today's session together. I mean, everybody, um, I do appreciate everybody's feedback as far as trying to take care of yourself. I think that's amazing that's, uh, that, that um, everybody's kind of thinking now mental health because it's such been so, um, you know, people don't like to talk about mental health, but it's very important. If you want to be successful in this, you have to. And I, and I really would say even a little further, look for professional help if you need it, right? I mean, it's sure. just to have that peace of mind. Um, and I'll really also that, you know, we are a team and I always get that feeling when I'm talking to you guys and I love it. And so um, little key words like partnership with Zillow and partnership with Team Fast and things like that are really keys that I'm going to start plugging in, you know, to myself. I love it. I love it. All right, Martinique, now that you are not driving, she's a super mom, she's a super businesswoman. So Martinique, takeaways from today's session, and I want you to take the team off the field. Let's run it back. Go ahead, Martinique. Takeaways, so many takeaways. Um, just be mindful, put yourself first. What was the soul one? Like focus on your soul and things that fill your soul like that mm. just... I got so many goosebumps in this one. I just love it. I just want to say that I love all of you. I appreciate all of you for always being so vulnerable and explaining like you go into such detail about your lives and just, you know, you share a lot and I appreciate all of it. Um, let's go get this bag. I love y'all. Have a good Monday. Oh, that's right. That's right, you guys. You know what? This is what culture is. This is the epitome of culture. Once again, goosebumps from what just what Martinique just said. I appreciate you guys. I am grateful for each and every one of you. Go out there and crush your day, own your week. For the top producers on the line, I'll see you guys for dinner tonight. I'll see everybody on Friday for the release of F9. I'm excited about that. You guys come out in your old cars, come out in your new cars, come out in your fast cars, come out in your Humpties. I don't care what you come out in. Make sure you show up. Make sure you have your Team Fast swag on and let's get together and have an amazing, amazing time. So you guys, thank you. I'll see you on Wednesday and I'll see you tomorrow at the team meeting. Have a wonderful day, everybody.